Hello everybody, Dr. Ryan here, I'm a board certified specialist internist. Thank you so much for joining us in this our 72nd OSCE series episode. Wow! And we're talking about bronchiectasis. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, well, what are you waiting for? So this is the typical illness script for someone who has a bronchiectasis. A uh, patient comes to you uh, presenting with a chronic history, really, um, after significant inhalation exposure to pool chemicals, mm, and comes to you complaining of a chronic productive cough. They say for months to years. Right? It's definitely chronic, um, and classically has crepitations at the bases on physical examination. Speech and gram stain shows multiple, multiple gram positive and gram negative organisms. And speech and culture shows us gram negative enteric such as Proteus mirabilis, one of the examples. What is the diagnosis, guys? And the patient does have clubbing as well, bronchiectasis. So what about bronchiectasis? What can we say about bronchiectasis? Well, we need to recognize inhalational injury is one of the factors that predisposes a patient to bronchiectasis. Normal lung is normally not colonized by multiple organisms. But when a patient has bronchiectasis, their lung becomes a culturing pot for a variety of different organisms. So if no history of inhalation or injury is included in the scenario, think about cystic fibrosis, very important post-TB bronchiectasis in our clinical setting here in sub-Saharan Africa where TB is endemic and obstructive lesions. And there's a beautiful acronym called OK CHAPS. OK CHAPS. O stands for obstruction of the bronchus, K is for cartagenous syndrome, C is for cystic fibrosis, H is for hypogamma globulinemia, P is for um, post-infectious and S stands for Sjogren's and connective tissue diseases, right? But by and large, post-TB in our setting, probably the most common. And there's the entity called RADS, that's RAD, Reactive Airway Dysfunction Syndrome. And this is a type of occupational asthma that occurs after inhalation of very specific irritants. And symptoms of RADS are very similar to that of asthma, but the airways are not typically colonized with organisms unless an element of bronchiectasis exists. So the diagnosis in this particular scenario, you want to do a high res um, CD scan of a helical CD scan of the chest and a thorough evaluation for underlying immunodeficiency, do a pulmonary function test as well. And treatment in this specific instance is culture directed antimicrobials and chest physiotherapy. Please be aware of three organisms that can cause serious problems in this scenario Pseudomonas aspergillosis and Mycobacterium avium complex. Right? And here's a beautiful um, you know, infographic from Calgary Guide, beautiful resource. And we're talking about um, the pathogenesis and clinical findings behind bronchiectasis. So usually bronchiectasis leads to irreversibly dilated bronchi and this sets up a vicious cycle. The more dilated the bronchus, the more infection you know, can happen in the bronchus and the more dilated it becomes, the more infection, the more dilated it's the vicious cycle, right? And you have um, easily collapsible areas. All of this gives rise to bronchiectasis which and it refers to persistent and progressive damage to the lungs. So, so this could lead to defect in immunity or mucus clearance which would then lead to persistent bacteria in the airway, commonly Pseudomonas staph aureus, which leads to the chronic uh, productive cough, mucopanulant cough, tissue damage as well, which could lead to structural damage to the bronchial walls, obstructive PFTs, failure to thrive in kids, very important. That tissue damage can then lead to epithelial destruction of the airways, which gives rise to hemoptysis and chest pain, further impairment of bacterial clearance, gives rise to those adventitious and spiritually sounds, crackles and wheezes, but crackles usually more than wheezes, typical uh, early spiritually crackles, which is very really coarse, right? And then it also lead to ventilation, perfusion, mismatch, and diminished gas exchange, which impairs oxygenation. And that is responsible for the digital clubbing, which is quite rare, but can happen, fatigue, dyspnea, and cyanosis. And then we spoke about OK chaps, right? Obstruction to the bronchus, cartagenin, cystic fibrosis, hypogamma globulinemia, right? Uh, ABPA, which is allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, post-infectious, usually from potassium or TB, and Sjogren's and connective tissue diseases. Right? Okay, my friends, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 to 20 is a powerful portion of scripture. And here Paul says, do not deceive yourselves. If any of you thinks he is wise by the standards of this age, he should become a fool so that he may become wise. For the wisdom, look at this, the wisdom of the world is foolishness in God's sight. As it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness, and the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. Wow! 
What a scripture. We cannot fully understand the Lord. We are so out of depth. Our wisdom is like a small drop compared to the ocean of God's wisdom. And I think it takes humility of heart when the Holy Spirit works within us to be able to acknowledge this. And when we acknowledge this in our hearts and lives, then the Holy Spirit can do a work in us and help us to perceive God's will. And then we have revelation on scripture that we can pragmatically apply in our lives to make us powerful and effective in service unto God, bringing us the grace of God. Have a lovely day. I'll see you soon. Take care. Here are my references.